Hey guys, my name is Limited Board, and today I'll be giving you a quick tutorial on how to make your very own wireless redstone touchpad like the one I showed you in my previous video. Now, if you haven't already seen my original video, a link, uh, a link will pop up on the screen as an annotation right about now. So click on that if you haven't already watched it. Alright, let's get started. My touchpad system can be broken down into three distinct parts. The platform you stand on, the X and Y tracks that the mobs, such as wolves, will move on to track your movements, and the circuitry. The platform is nothing special, though I prefer to use a checkerboard pattern uh, to easily discern, betwe discern between uh, each block. The only requirement for the platform is that you have at least one, uh, one uh, block beneath, so allow one block of space beneath uh, the platform to allow pa uh, wires to pass beneath it. Now let's move on to the tracking system. The tracking system consists of two slots where the mobs, uh, where your mobs will move back and forth. So you see, uh, in each tracking system, there are four uh, pressure plates, wooden pressure plates, at the bottom of each. And uh, it is recommended that you place redstone lamps all around uh, facing towards the platform so that way uh, once, your mo your, once your mobs move back and forth you can tell whether or not they actually are tracking you or whether or not they're just confused. Finally, we reach the more complicated section of the tutorial. So let me just switch over to a different program. Now before I move any further, uh, it is expected that you have a basic understanding of redstone logic. There are many instructional videos on YouTube explaining how to do this, so I won't be covering the basics. Uh, so the first thing you have to do, oh, whoopsies, oh, I'm skipping steps. The first thing you have to do is separate the signals. Um, there are many ways to do this, so pick whichever way you like best, but um, the, the pressure plates are right next to each other, so that's, that's a real problem when constructing this device, uh, simply because it's, it's much more difficult to separate the signals. However, uh, for a 4x4 touchpad, this system seems to work the best, and I'll just show you quickly how I made it. So, first thing you do is place wire going this way. Then, another wire, uh, you need a block right here. And, voila. You need wire passing under here. You, you'll need uh, to place some blocks to prevent the uh, wires from crossing with each other. And that one will just go uh, straight right out of the, um, right from the pressure plate. And now you've created two separate, uh, separated wiring systems. So let's just move over to this program. Uh, this is the logic gate that I used to increase the accuracy of the mob tracking system. Uh, to create the logic gate, I use this program called Logism that allows you to simulate uh, circuit logic. So right here, you'll see the, these boxes that have zeros in them with green dots, and um, those are your inputs. These uh, green circles with zeros are your outputs, so these are basically like your pressure plates. And uh, this may seem a little bit overwhelming to anyone that... Um, has never seen any electrical diagrams before, but it's it's really pretty much pretty simple. Uh, when you see a dark green wire, that means that it is that it is receiving no power, uh, just like in Minecraft. When you see a bright green wire, uh, that means that it is receiving power. And these right here are different logic gates. This is a NOT gate. This is an AND gate. Another NOT gate. And these are two OR gates. And finally, there are two NOT gates. And these, uh, these other two gates are 
basically identical to each other. Uh, now, if I were to input, give a quick input, uh, if I were to input at input A, you'd get output A. Give input B, you'd get output B. And inputting C, or inputting both A and B, you will get output C. So it's sort of in between both, if you notice. So that's why, um, let's say you have a mob and it's standing on both pressure plates because mobs have hitboxes that uh, can stand on both pressure plates at once, but not three. Uh, it will, uh, the logic gate will say, oh, hey, this guy this guy is standing on two plates, not just one, so that must mean that he's standing between two blocks. Uh, now, the reason why there are three of these gates right here is because um, this is for the uh, these two pressure plates. Uh, this gate right here is for these two pressure plates, and then this gate right here is for the bottom two pressure plates, and it's identical for uh, the other set of uh, pressure plates. All right, let's move back over to Minecraft. Uh, oh, and I will include a picture of this diagram uh, as a link in the description for you to download. So that diagram will be included uh, in the description for you to reference. Uh, here, okay, so Right here is what the uh, logic gate looks like in Minecraft. Uh, and I'll build one for you right off of here. So what you do, you just follow these instructions exactly. Uh, you place two blocks, followed by a torch, another torch. Place a block over each redstone torch. And then you're going to create a what looks like a T see this T that's created, uh, and place three more torches and redstone across the top of the T. Place redstone beneath the T, just below these two redstone torches. And you're going to create two more knot gates right here and right here. And then finally, you're going to place a uh, some redstone and a block beneath it right there and your outputs will be somewhat like this so the um it works exactly like uh i had showed you on the diagram uh let's see here how do i do this okay let's do it with this so if i drop on output A, you will get output A. Drop this torch on output B, you will get output B. However, if you drop uh, a torch on both A and B, you will get output C. So what you would basically do is you'd hook these up, hook another one of these up to uh, this these set of uh, wires and then you'd hook another one up right in front of here for uh, these two plates right here and you'd basically do same thing just repeat it on this side so now let's bring it all together I'll just head over here to my original design and it's all the same logic, all the same wiring. Uh, you can link these outputs, as you can see here, to a redstone display. And the wires just basically move vertically all the way over to this matrix of AND gates. And so um, there will be a link in the description of where I got the design for, these, for this uh, AND gate array, uh, which you can reference. Uh, and it's very simple to make. Uh, it takes about a minute to take to make a single column, and then you can use either World Edit or you can make it yourself, as I did, because World Edit was totally screwed up and wasn't working for me. Um, don't know why that was happening, but um, and and you can uh, just copy it and paste it 
and create the array out of that. So uh, let me just demonstrate to you how this works. I'll need a wolf egg. And I'll drop one wolf in here and one wolf in here. Make sure that instant kill is turned off. It was off. And next you are going to place blocks, preventing them from jumping. And now that wolf is provoked to attack me. This one is also provoked to attack me, but it's a good idea just to attack the other one as well. Uh, simply because they s sometimes get a little bit confused. And now you'll see as they move across the pressure plates, they cause this, uh, they, they update the, uh, array right here, and you get a, an output. So, um, on that note, if you... Enjoyed learning from me and you want to see more videos, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to answer each question as best I can. And uh, so thanks for watching.